Still is linking. Linking. Everyone. Now, just as we decided, everybody, that you should uh, come back here so that we could leave because they'd all gone to sleep, look, they've just got up. So we'll <laughs> go through the um, sort of, uh, uh, I don't know, emotional turmoil of deciding whether or not they're going to cross this great river or not. You can see, perhaps up if we go, little pan up if I, if I might trouble you, cameraman, thank you so much. Um, <laughs> The greying sky seems to be some weather blowing in from the north there, which is quite interesting. Maybe it will inspire some movement. Now we've been discussing how on earth you can predict whether these things are going to cross or not. And what you can see from that picture is that we're not the only idiots in the Mara region waiting to see if this little herd will cross. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight vehicles that side and about the same this end. So, we don't think we're in the wrong place. Uh, Peter Bratt tried to come up with some statistical analysis for when and how you could predict whether a wildebeest would come across the river. Uh, look, not a bad model, but I suppose given that we've only been here for 24 hours, it could do with some refining. But here we go. I've said that before at least four or five times. Look at that, Graham. We seem to have 13% battery left. So it should probably die as they go across the... <laughs> Hello, someone called Love3Dogs. Um, hello, love three dogs. Well, welcome to Kenya. And you want, you say you're not used to seeing so many safari vehicles. Yes, nor are we, I must confess. But that's just how the, char the character of this place. And, you know, it can be, I suppose, a little intrusive at times, but everyone's generally fairly well behaved. And the thing is, it's so open that you can kind of be in an area like this without affecting the animals at all and perhaps not affecting the guest experience either. The other thing also love three dogs is that off-road driving is extremely limited in this area which means that although there are eight vehicles that side and eight this side, um, no one's driving off the road. So no one's messing around and so it's actually not a bad thing at all. It's a hammer cop, I think. We've got a hammer cop there. Well done Graham. That's the bird. Yes, that would be good. And it would look less like a vulture. There we are. Wonderful. Hammerkop. You've all seen a Hammerkop there at Juba. Same bird here. Well, not the exact same bird, but the same species. They're not known to come on little jaunts like we are. And here, this indecisive bunch of gnus uh, showing why they are known as uh, rather gormless. Ooh. Here we go. James Richard, you want to know about endemic birds to the Mara. Are there any? Yes, I've no doubt there are some. I'm afraid to tell you that I have simply not been here long enough for me to be able to give you a list of the endemics. But yes, I'm sure there are one or two endemic birds here. Um, I mean, some of the new ones we've seen, but we've seen the first lifer we had was at the, the Nairobi airport. And that was the superb starling, a stunning bird of sort of russet red, white, and then those amazing iridescent blues, greens and blacks that you're used to on our glossy starlings back there in South Africa. We've seen the other thing we saw today while on Facebook. Oh, this is starting to look very good, everyone. The other thing we saw was something called a purple grenadier. Purple grenadier looks a little bit like a violet-eared waxbill. I don't know if you've ever seen a violet-eared waxbill before, but it's a little finch-like bird with astoundingly beautiful purple colours. Now, Cat and Tampa, you say, have we seen cheetah? We haven't, but we expected to, you know. We expected to see cheetah, and I think we will. They are certainly around here. They're not uncommon at all. They like to eat Thompson's gazelle very much. We did see a serval, like I said, and I maybe forgot to tell you, we saw lions yesterday, one of which 
I said, look over there, everyone, it's a leopard. And it wasn't. It was a lion lying in a tree. Come on. Come on, you feckless beasts, get in the water. Oh, great upheaval. Brenda, you say you love watching them jump into the water. Brenda, it would give me no more pleasure in nothing would give me more pleasure right now than to see these things doing precisely that taking the plunge leaping off the precipice trusting to nothing but their herd instinct to get them across the river and hoping that if someone gets nailed by a crocodile it ain't me in front come on there yeah, look look he's peering peering over the edge Hello, Tim. You want to know if we see any alligators waiting? Tim, no alligators in this part of the world. They're only found in the New World. But we do find the Nile crocodile. That's what you find, that's what you're looking at over there. Well, eventually we'll be looking at over there. It's a little bit difficult filming in here because we're actually under a compulsory roof. Um, but they are, we don't know if there are any waiting for this particular herd. There could be any number lurking in the de depths here. But they look like that they might want to cross in an area where there are quite a few rapids, which means I don't think there'll be anything quite the size of that 10-foot behemoth over there. But there certainly was another one the same size, pretty much opposite where these guys are on the bank. And were they to leap into the water, it's quite possible that he would get into the water with them and sort of swim at them from the other side. Jennifer, you say you're so nervous you can't even watch these wildebeest crossing on the TV anymore because of the crocs. Well, Jennifer, um, yeah, I feel a little bit nervous myself. I, my gut's telling me they're not going to do it, to be honest, but let's see. I hope I'm wrong, because it would be such an amazing thing to witness, especially plunging off a bank that deep. Thank you all for your screenshots. And Stephen very kindly saying to Graham what lovely photography he's taking. Well, hmm. he's not bad, is he? He's just gone huh, next to me. <laughs> and that was a hippopotamus you heard in the background. We've got 11% battery left, Graham. We do have other batteries, everyone. But we're not going to use we're them. We're not going to use them because there, these things are going to go now. Here we go. Come on. Come on now. Be brave. There are lots of you who sacrifice one or two to the crocs. It's just fantastic to witness. And the wind is blowing. It's starting to feel quite eerie. battery drops too much more everyone will and they don't cross we'll probably quickly link away and then change the battery but for now let's just keep watching it is really suspense filled David you want to know if some have already crossed oh you worked um, I'm just talking to Graham, everyone. Sorry, just finding another battery in this car. David, you want to know if some of these, if some have crossed? Uh, the answer is no, not here. Uh, you, over time they have certainly, but not today. This is the second time we've been past here. This is from where we did our first broadcast on Facebook this morning, and they were doing not the, well, pretty much exactly what they're doing now. And then we went to another spot and a whole lot crossed. I mean, we probably watched a couple of thousand crossing the river. So that was incredible. These guys have given up again. So I, I think what we should do now, everybody, is we're going to do... Hang on one sec. Oh, one's running. Here we go. No. He's basically saying to his mates, are you mad? Get away from the edge. 
There's nothing wrong with the grass this side. All right, we're going to change the battery now, everybody. So we'll hand you back over to South Africa. And Steph, I don't know what he's doing or what he's looking at, but whatever he has to say to you will be unquestionably interesting. See you shortly.